Hello my soccer universe. After match day 5 of this year's Nations League, as expected there have been many decisions already been made. There are only a few groups that are open. However, it's quite interesting that League A almost anything is decided. You have to look for some exciting matchups. League B on the other side is almost wide open. Yes, with varying degrees of excitement, you have the super wide open group B1, where basically everyone still can get promoted. Whereas the group with England and Greece, yeah, I guess England will get the win over Ireland and will walk through to League A, where Honestly, they do belong. In League C, the only thing that's really left to be decided is whether Bulgaria can pip Northern Ireland. Don't really think so. I still decided to wear Bulgaria because, you know, a win for Bulgaria is something rare. So let's celebrate that one. And then in League D, can San Marino do the impossible? Get a second win and qualify? That is for me one of the more exciting matches to look forward to for match day six. Of course, I'm also looking forward to Austria's match tonight. They have a beautiful jersey released for that one. Need that one. It will be limited, so keep fingers crossed that I will get it. But it's not about jerseys here. We're going to talk about the matches in the Nations League on match day five. I will briefly review for each league the matches that we saw, and then we try to identify the matches that are worth your time watching. And what was actually quite an entertaining game, it was a game that I decided to watch live. San Marino and Gibraltar play out a 1-1 draw. Gibraltar took an early lead through a Walker penalty. However, San Marino were agonizingly close to a goal. They hit once the post and there was a great chance where a back heel then is just tapped over the bar by the goalie. In the second half, though, Gibraltar also hit the crossbar and it seemed like Gibraltar will hold on to the win that would have already qualified them for League C. Alas, then... They give away a penalty that Nani converts in stoppage time. Both teams then actually had chances to win it, but it remains 1-1, meaning with a win in Liechtenstein, San Marino can go directly into League C. And for a while, it seemed like Moldova could not get their vital win in Andorra that would open up qualification to League C for them. Started out slow, even Andorra had a couple of chances, but they, they ratcheted up the pressure as the game went along. And as you thought, they are not going to find a breakthrough. Postolacci makes a solo run through the Andorran defense, takes a shot, and in the second minute, it's a winner for Moldova and direct qualification for them as well. It is very simple. You have to watch Liechtenstein against San Marino. Should San Marino get the win, they leapfrog Gibraltar and finish in first place. Any other result, we'll see Gibraltar go through directly to League C. Should San Marino lose to Liechtenstein, then Liechtenstein will go into the playoffs. So there is quite some riding on this one. The other match in League D, we are Malta can draw level with Moldova. However, they lose the tiebreaker. So that's basically a non-contest. The early Thursday evening gave us quite a big upset with the Faroe Islands beating Armenia 1-0 away from home thanks to a Davidson penalty. Armenia had more chances, however the Faroe's defense held tight and win with a penalty, which means they have now the inside track to actually go into the promotion playoffs to League B, while Armenia have to watch out for Latvia. Latvia themselves held their own against a dominant Northern Macedonia side, even had a pretty good chance, but in the end it's Serafimov that gives Northern Macedonia the deserved win they already through to the next round but still with a win over Armenia Latvia could actually avoid the relegation playoffs. With a 2-1 win over Lithuania at home Cyprus secured their League C survival. Lithuania have to go into the relegation playoffs most likely while the game in Bucharest had to be suspended in stoppage time of the second half at the score of 0-0 because pro-Serbian chance aggravated Kosovari players who then walked off. Remains to be seen how that game is gonna be counted. All I can say is that Kosovo actually had quite some good chances in that game. However, the draw would be enough for Romania to qualify. Over in Group C3, Northern Ireland got a 2-0 win relatively unfast over Belarus. Two second-half goals by Balyat and a Charles penalty get them the deserved points. Well, Bulgaria get a 1-0 win at Luxembourg. Beautiful dress by Luxembourg. But beautiful was also the winning goal by Bulgaria. Great wide-range shot by Kraev. Hit it at 22-22. And then there was some good saves by Mitov in there. Bulgaria keep the chance for promotion alive. At least a playoff spot should be in there. Sweden 
didn't strike in the third minute of each half to earn a 2-1 win over Slovakia, which gives them direct qualification to League B, where honestly they should belong. Jokeres and Isak combining on both goals. The first goal was a pass by Isak that Jokeres converts in the third minute, and then the 2-1 was a pass by Jokeres, and Isak runs through the Slovak defense, no one's really tackling him, puts it into the net. It's 2-1. Overall, I would say the Swedish win was deserved. However, Slovakia did always manage to get back into the game, and especially in the first half, they get the equalizer through Hanchko and had their chances as well. On the other side, Jokeres also missed two more goals, so Sweden back, Slovakia will go to the promotion playoffs. And in the early kickoff of that group, Estonia hang on to a nil-nil draw in Azerbaijan, which secures for them survival in League C, while Azerbaijan have to go potentially in a relegation playoff against a League D runner-up. As I'm recording this video, there's still no decision on how the Romania-Kosovo game will be counted. However, it is very unlikely that Kosovo will win the tiebreaker over Romania, so that group is all done. So we have to look at the bottom two groups. Armenia, a team that was actually hoping for promotion, have to go to Latvia and win there and avoid defeat at any cost, because otherwise they will go down. And if they win, they will have to hope that Northern Macedonia does their job against the Faroe Islands. Otherwise, the Faroese will be in the playoff. Then we also have in Group C, three Bulgaria and Northern Ireland fighting for the top spot. Belarus is in the mix for a playoff spot. They would need to beat Bulgaria. However, with a win, Bulgarian give themselves a chance and then hope that Luxembourg does something against Northern Ireland. They need a win. Unlikely, I think Northern Ireland will go through there. Well, Austria got a very comfortable, never in doubt, 2-0 win in Kazakhstan, which is a great win for them, because that puts them now in pole position for winning Nations League Group B3, which means direct qualification to League A for the next edition of the Nations League. It also puts them as group winners in a good position of earning at least a playoff spot for World Cup qualifying, but even better, there's also a good chance now that they will be in pot 1 for the World Cup qualifying draw for Europe. So really, really big win there. Now you have to follow up against Slovenia at home. What is needed against Slovenia at home basically depends on the evening game between Slovenia and Norway, where it definitely will be easier if Slovenia at least get points off the Norwegians. But that all aside, the game never was really in doubt. Yeah, there was some nervous scenes here and there, but the only real chance by Kazakhstan was a long-range shot that Schlager could easily parry. And then Austria was really good in pressing. They intercept a Kazakh attack. The ball is quickly played forward, goes to Posh, who makes a cross in, goes to Baumgartner, who controls it first, then two Kazakh defenders actually catch up with him, but with a dummy he steps past one and puts it into the empty net. It gets even better when eight minutes later Marochin is sent off for a direct red card by pulling back Baumgartner, who together with Gregoric was running through on goal, and then from the free kick Gregoric actually directly puts it into the net. Goalie, maybe, but you know, was, was a nice free kick also. They hit also the post once more, and, and if I have any complaint for this game is that Austria didn't score more goals, especially in the second half. It was a little bit too laxy, basically, and, you know, having control, Kazakhstan never cut any, anything, but with a man more, you could have added a few more goals, but, you know, that's a small complaint. They kept all their energies, I hope, for the game against Slovenia in Vienna on Sunday. Norway put themselves in the really good position of qualifying, at least for the playoffs, by beating Slovenia 4-1 away from home. Early on, Nusa gave Norway the lead. They weren't the better team for quite a while, till a penalty was given for Slovenia that Ceško converted. Then Slovenia had the upper hand, but with a brilliant pass by Berje, Holland could run through on goal, and just before the half makes it 2-1 Norway, and that more or less killed off Slovenia. Nusa adds... A deflected shot in the 59th minute to make it 3-1. And then Jens Peter Hauer also a fourth goal. Really good stuff from Norway. They have at least a playoff spot guaranteed. Meanwhile, England get a huge bounce back win. 3-0 over Greece in Athens. However, it was not as easy as the final result might suggest. True, England had control early on, took the lead after Bellingham plays it over to Madueke, crosses in Watkins, seventh minute, 1-0 England. And England were then, I guess, for the first 20 minutes or so better. But Greece came up and did have their chances through Pacaceta, Tzolis and so on. And just when Greece were really pushing to get the goal in the second half. They were caught on a counter-attack and it's a Bellingham shot that goes off the post on the back 
of Vlaco Dimos into the net. A really, really bad goal. The Mola settled the game and also gave England the head to head. And then Curtis Jones scores the third one after Gibbs White assist. Again, I think the scoring was way too high for how tight that game was for quite a while. Meanwhile, Ireland get a 1 0 win over Finland, which means they will go in the relegation playoff and are not directly relegated, which is happening now to Finland. However, Finland had quite a chance. They hit the woodwork twice in the first half, and it seems like it's Finland all the way. And then a really nice work goal by Johnson across in, and Ferguson just outjumps everyone, gives Ireland the lead just before the half. And there was a huge chance for. The Finns, they had a penalty after Ferguson handled the ball in the box. And Poyan Palos sees his penalty saved by Kelleher. And so Ireland at least secure third spot. Finland down in League C. In Group B4, we had a great goal as draw between Turkey and Wales. And yes, the two teams played Turkey in red and Wales in yellow. I just decided to keep the contrast up there and not have two red jerseys. That game literally had everything. Great atmosphere, many chances. However, especially Turkey missed quite a few. And to their credit, Wales was not intimidated by the atmosphere. Even had a few chances themselves. The best one, of course, fell to Harry Wilson in stoppage time of the first half when he hit the post. The biggest chance for Turkey, of course, was a penalty. That honestly was not really a penalty, if you ask me. The player gets the ball as well. Arctur Kogli in the 89th minute has the chance to win it, but goes on the side of the host and out. Turkey probably will rule that they couldn't win this one and decide the group prematurely. On the other side, that draw definitely helps Turkey more as they have a two-point advantage over Wales going into the last match day. Meanwhile, two lead goals by Oskarsson and Johannesson give Iceland the win in Pristina against Montenegro, meaning that Iceland have avoided direct relegation to League C and they will be in the playoff with two draws. Group B1 stays wide open, of course, the draw definitely helps the Czechs a little bit more than all the other teams. Started with a quite lively 1-1 between Georgia and Ukraine, where Georgia always had more of the initiative and Ukraine hanging more back. But Ukraine took the lead after a corner kick for Georgia and a Mudrik run across half the pitch. Puts a cross in and then it's an own goal by Kirby Kelia. And Georgia was rattled by that one. Second half, they come up, they hit the crossbar through Kvitschak Faraskelia. They get an equalizer in the 76 minutes through Mikhail Datze. And while they were pushing forward, Ukraine actually had a pretty good chance in stoppage time, where Mamadash really twice had to make pretty good saves from Ukrainian shots. Meanwhile, in Tirana, Albania and the Czech Republic play out a rather dull nil-nil draw. The Czechs maybe had a little bit more of the first half, the Albania had a little bit more of the second half. As I said, that draw definitely helps the Czechs a little bit more. League B is really exciting, and I think if you have the chance to watch League B matches, you should do so. I mean, today we have Austria against Slovenia. Austria with a win are through. You would expect them to win, but it's not a foreign conclusion because Slovenia is not a bad team. Should Austria drop points and Norway win at home at Kazakhstan, well, likely Norway will be in the first place. Then we have the shooter between England and Greece, where Greece really will hope that Ireland will get something of England. Unlikely, as I said, but everything's possible. Then, on Tuesday, the absolute madness that is Group B1. We have a straight shooter for the first spot between the Czech Republic and Georgia. That much we know. But Albania against Ukraine is also decisive. Ukraine cannot win this group anymore. However, they can still get a playoff spot should, for instance, Czech Republic beat Georgia. So this one is really wide open. At the same time, Turkey need at least a draw in Montenegro, provided that Wales is not beating Iceland by a whole lot. Goal difference speaks for Turkey. With a 1-0 win over Belgium, Italy have qualified for the quarterfinals of the Nations League. And given their really bad performance in the summer, this comes quite as a turnaround. True Belgium are not the great side that they were a few years ago. But still, this Italy team were much the better side in Belgium for at least an hour, if not more. They took the lead through Sandro Tonali, his first international goal after a nice attack where Di Lorenzo then puts it over and he can tap it into the empty net. Took a slight deflection in the build-up as well. And then Italy controlled it. Had a pretty big chance by Rattegi to start the second half to make it 2-0. It was like a nice save by Castells in there as well. Then a few more as well. But then actually Belgium came up. Had a chance by Trossard, Lukaku, who else? And even fast and hit the post late on Italy should have killed the game off sooner and with a draw in the last game against France they can even win this group France themselves disappoint with only a nil-nil draw at home against Israel at a 
almost empty start to France. I guess the whole situation surrounding the Israeli team did not help the atmosphere at all. It was Goli Peret, who was more or less the hero for Israel in this game. France did create chances, but overall looked very dull in attack, one also has to say. And with some luck, Israel actually could have scored themselves. Be it as it may, Israel still have a chance by beating Belgium to avoid direct relegation into League B. Whereas France, with a win over Italy, can actually win the group, however both teams already qualified for the quarterfinals. After a scoreless first half, there were boos in Porto. However, coach Martinez brings on Vitinha, everything suddenly makes defensively a little bit more sense. And the Rafa Leal run puts Portugal on the winning path. He runs more or less over the pitch, puts it over to Nuno Mensch, and he returns the favor, and Rafa himself heads it in. 59th minutes, one at Portugal. There's a penalty, 72nd minute, Cristiano converts, and then all dams broke. And it was then Portugal really at their dazzling best. Bruno Fernandes, brilliant goal. Then we had also one by Pedro Neto, assisted by Cristiano. Then Cristiano himself with a rather clumsy looking bicycle kick. 5-0, very late on Marchuk adds one for Poland. And with that win, Portugal are through to the quarterfinals. Croatia also could have secured the quarterfinal spot. Alas, they lose in Scotland. 1-0 is the first League A win for Scotland. The winning goal came very late through McGinn in the 86th minute. Of course, it helped as soon got sent off with a second yellow card in the 44th minute. Still, Croatia did have some really good chances that missed by a hair, but later on there was a search by Scotland and they get the win. In a matchup of two truly bad jerseys, Spain get a 2-1 away win at Denmark, securing the spot in the quarterfinals, putting Denmark at risk and I have to say, even with a rather second string lineup, Spain can look so dazzling at times. They have some really great moves in there. Ayose Perez already hit the crossbar early on, and then he plays a beautiful ball to Oyar Sabal, who gives Spain the lead. Yes, then Denmark actually came up and had a few chances, but early in the second half, Spain more or less put the game to bed when Olmo played it over to Perez. Runs on goal 2 0 for Spain. Late on, it's Isaksen who first hit the post. And then after a really bad Fabian Ruiz back pass, manages to put the ball into the net. But Denmark cannot find an equalizer in stoppage time. So that opened the door for Serbia, who got their point in a 1-1 draw against Switzerland. A game where I think the draw overall reflects the game well, but Switzerland will be a little bit heartbroken that they couldn't get a win. Noah Okafor missed from point-blank range in the first half. They also hit the post at one point. On the other side, there was a penalty for Serbia that Mitrovic put down the middle and was saved by Gregor Kobel. Switzerland thought they were close to a winner, which would have meant they would avoid relegation. When Amdun in the 78th minute strikes, however, then Terzic after Vlahovic pass keeps Serbia alive. They now avoid direct relegation and with a win over Denmark, they can even qualify for the quarterfinals. Well, pretty much all is decided in Group A3 with both of the big boys getting resounding victories at home. In Amsterdam, the Dutch win against Hungary 4-0. That was the big talking point was that after a really bright start by Hungary, Adam Schaller, the assistant coach, kind of collapsed on the bench and had to be treated there. And there was a quick discussion between the Hungarian team whether they want to continue playing. They did so. And what felt a little bit wrong is that after they decided to restart, there immediately was a VAR review and a penalty for the Dutch that Vejos then converts. Still, there was a great chance for Varga to immediately equalize and Hungary, especially before the collapse, and then also after, were really well in the game. But then the game turned on another penalty call deep in stoppage time. Although I think if you would take off that stoppage time, it would have been still regulation. It was a foul on Daniel Malm. And Cody Gakbo takes the ball from Vejos, converts that one. And then the second half. Hungary tried, however, as soon as Denzel Dumfries in the 64th minute made it 3-0, there was only one win, it could have gotten really ugly, so I hope Miners gets a fourth goal. As it could have been more, but it did not represent the game, especially in the first half. And I'm sure that whatever happened on the bench in the first half deeply impacted. Hungary. Meanwhile, Germany did what Germany so often does. They not only secured a group win, but do so in style, beating Bosnia-Herzegovina 7-0 at home. And there were some really nice goals in there. I would say the pick was the third one by Karl Havertz with a nice 1-2 between him and Wirtz. The opening goal came through Musiala. Kleindins gets the second and also the seventh goal. Wirtz also gets a brace. So all happy for Germany. Lior Sané also getting the goal to 6-0. I think there's something brewing in Germany. To be honest, there's not much excitement 
Redmond left in League A. I mean, Italy against France, this is for the group win, but it will not change much except for pride that's at stake. Belgium, Belgium should avoid a three goal defeat to Israel, otherwise they will go down directly, but again, seems to be an unlikely outcome. Then Poland against Scotland. If Scotland win against Poland, they leapfrog them and will stay in a playoff, whereas Croatia also have to hope that Poland don't overtake them should they lose to Portugal. The biggest one is probably Serbia against Denmark. That's a straight match for the second spot. Bosnia, Netherlands and Hungary, Germany are non-contest because that group is already completely settled. Well, that was it from me for Nations League match day five. UEFA will go fast. We already have a Friday, the draw for the Nations League playoffs. So watch out for that one. And then we also know already the compositions probably for the pots for World Cup qualification. So watch that space. I'm hopeful Austria will get into pot one. That's the only chance I think that we will have to qualify for the next World Cup. But hey, the games all have to be played. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Talk to you soon about more things about Nations League and other stuff. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!